From familial murders to turning children into dolls, here's eight creepy true crime cases. Number eight, Yosef Fritz. This story takes fatherly love to a whole new level. In 2008, the world was shocked to learn about the chilling life of Austrian native Elizabeth Fritzl, who spent 24 years trapped in a basement prison by her own father. It all began when her dad asked for her help fixing up a door in the cellar. Little did she know that the very same cellar would be her living nightmare for years to come. While in captivity, Elizabeth was victim to sexual assault over and over again, and abused thousands of times. With no access to medical care of any kind, and only a pair of kitchen scissors, she gave birth to seven children in the dark, damp basement. Elizabeth's father, Josef Fritzl, covered up his crimes for decades by pretending his daughter had run away and joined a cult. After the birth of the children, he left three of them with Elizabeth below his house, while taking the others and raising them above ground. He had Elizabeth write letters to her mother, saying she was completely fine, just unable to raise the kids and begging her to take care of them. Sadly, one of the children died in Elizabeth's arms just hours after it was born. To cover up the death, the monster Yosef incinerated the baby's body. In some twisted act of goodwill, one day when the oldest child in the cellar got sick, Yosef took her to the doctor for the first time in her 19 years of life. Police were concerned with her state of health and demanded the mother of the poor child be contacted. Reluctantly, Yosef drove Elizabeth to the hospital, claiming she had finally been released from the cult. After getting her alone, the police were horrified to hear the shocking truth. Thankfully, Elizabeth never had to see her father again, and she's now living safely. Meanwhile, her devil of a father is behind bars for life. Frankly, we think his punishment should be a bit more severe. What do you think? Number 7. Megan Huntsman It takes a special kind of evil to hurt a child, and an even more sinister evil to kill your own flesh and blood. But one Utah mother defied nature in love after killing multiples of her very own newborns. Megan Huntsman was your average suburban mother of three, living in Pleasant Grove, Utah. Her life seemed perfectly normal on paper, loving husband, great kids, nothing out of the ordinary. But one day her partner, Darren West, was cleaning out their garage when he found a small white box. Curious about what could possibly be inside, he opened it in horror and found the tiny, rotting body of a newborn baby. Like any sane person, Darren immediately called the cops to investigate his findings. The cops tore up the garage and found six more babies stashed in similar looking boxes. There was only one other person who could be responsible, Megan. Apparently for 10 years, she'd been giving birth and instantly killing the babies right after. She claimed that she had killed them since they were going to be too expensive. Megan and Darren were secretly meth addicts at the time, and Megan firmly believed carrying these children to term, giving birth, killing them after, and stashing their bodies was easier than simply using birth control or a condom. She said the only reason she didn't do the same with her living children was because people knew about the pregnancies. Truly sick and disgusting. Darren claimed he was so messed up on drugs at the time that he had no idea the kind of evil his wife was doing. Thankfully, she'd be spending the rest of her life in prison. Just remember, meth not even once. Number 6. Colleen Ritzer Everyone has had a bad experience with a teacher. It's just a rite of passage for people who've been to a school. But most of us don't really do anything to lash out at the teacher after it's happened. Sadly, this wasn't the case for one unfortunate math instructor. Colleen Ritzer was new to teaching. She had just recently graduated college and started her work at Danvers High School. She instantly became a favorite among the students and staff for her positive personality and strong work ethic. Colleen really wanted to make a difference in kids' lives. She would often stay after school for hours to tutor students who needed a little extra help. With her ever-so-helpful frame of mind, she invited one student, 14-year-old Philip Chisholm, to stay and talk after class. Colleen had noticed Philip was struggling making friends and connecting with others after recently moving to the area. Reports from other student witnesses say he got upset when she asked about or mentioned Tennessee, the state Philip had moved from. Investigators think this triggered memories of the divorce of his parents and could have been his motive. On October 22, 2013, at around 3 o'clock, Colleen headed out of her classroom to use the bathroom. Moments later, Philip is seen on security cameras walking towards her with his hood up, covering the majority of his face. In the bathroom, the young man slashed his teacher's throat 16 times with a sharp box cutter before savagely sexually assaulting her. 
He was then filmed leaving the room with blood-soaked hands, only to return in different outfit 10 minutes later, wheeling a green recycling bin. He used the bin to move Colleen's body outside before dumping it, shoving a tree branch into her corpse, and posing it in a provocative manner. Philip showed no remorse whatsoever, and he was later charged and sentenced to 40 years in prison. It's truly disgusting to know what some people are capable of. Do you think 40 years is enough prison time for Philip? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 5. Dina Schlosser It's not surprising to hear that some mothers will do anything for their children even if it's some messed up form of mutilating care. Dina Schlosser was a loving wife and stay-at-home mother of two from Texas. Her husband, John, made good money as a software designer, but was sadly let go, which led to the couple losing their house. In their vulnerable state, the Schlossers turned to a higher power at the Water of Life Church. Dina had become obsessed with the pastor of the church, Doyle Davidson, and their teachings. The Water of Life Church preached that Jezebel spirits had taken over their town's women and were working to entice men. They thought prayer was the answer to everything and medicine was part of the devil's work. Soon after converting to their new faith, Dina became pregnant. She gave birth to twins, a boy and a girl, in their home with the help of a midwife. She claimed the boy died during birth, and without proper medical attention, Dina experienced severe mental health struggles due to postpartum depression. She even attempted to end her life by slitting her wrists, but her husband found her before it was too late. Her mental condition and ability to reason was abysmal. She was so obsessed with Pastor Davidson that she dressed her newborn baby up in white and asked him to marry her child to bring it closer to God. Later, she told her husband John that she wanted to give the baby to God himself. John didn't think much of it, but the very next morning, Dina went into her kitchen, found the biggest knife in the room, and did the unthinkable. She tried to cut off the child's arms, killing the baby in the process. The police later found her calm as a cucumber, sitting in a bloody mess, singing hymns to herself. While in custody, she's quoted repeating to herself, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Sorry, but I don't think Jesus had anything to do with this one. Number 4. Junko Ferrata this next story may be hard for some people to hear. A young Japanese girl named Junko Ferrata experienced a living hell. Junko was a pretty, well-mannered girl who didn't drink or smoke, which sadly didn't make her very popular in some crowds. One of her peers, who was a bit of a gangster named Hiroshi Miyano, approached her, saying he had a crush on her but didn't want a serious relationship. Turning him down for obvious reasons, Junko went about her day. But little did she know, Miano wasn't going to take no for an answer. A few days after the rejection, Miano and three other teenage boys kidnapped Junko, taking her to one of their houses. After taking her, they made her call her parents and lie, saying she was running away. The parents of the boy whose house Junko was being kept in eventually caught on that something was wrong, but chose to do nothing in fear of Miano's Yakuza connections. Over the 44 days Junko was held, she was subjected to brutal torture. It got to the point that Junko was begging for death. After all this torture, the boys finally took her life by pouring lighter fluid all over her body and setting her aflame. She soon died from shock. The sociopaths dumped her body in a 55-gallon concrete-filled drum in Tokyo. Junko was taken too early and deserves all the respect in the world for dealing with the torture she endured. Number 3. Turpin Family you may remember hearing about the Turpin family in the news a few years ago, but you probably don't know just how brutal the case was. The Turpins had 13 children, yes 13, and back in 2018 the world was shocked to discover the abuse and neglect these poor children suffered at the hands of their own mother and father, the very people meant to protect them. David and Louise Turpin reportedly kept the kids homebound for years, hardly ever letting them venture outside. Neighbors claimed that whenever they did see the children, they could only remember how pale and skinny they looked. The kids were fed once per day and were only granted permission to bathe once in an entire year. After years of this treatment, one daughter was able to escape and ask for help. The 17-year-old jumped out of an open window and called 911 on the first phone she could get her hands on and begged the police to save her siblings. The condition of the Turpin children was so bad that apparently one of them was a 29-year-old woman, but you could hardly tell based on how severely underfed and sickly she was, weighing only 82 pounds. Inside the home the children were kept, the house was a mess, with boxes of junk everywhere and dirty windows revealing stacks of diapers. 
In the previous, in their previous home, the Turpins left the carpets covered in filth, the doors littered with scratches and mysterious marks. It's been revealed that the mother, Louise, was a victim of sexual assault in her youth. Supposedly, her mother would often rent her out to older gentlemen. And while this crime is in itself terrible, it doesn't justify the way she treated and locked up her own children. The husband and wife criminal duo were given 25 years to life for their extreme case of neglect. Number 2. Oleg Sokolov In 2019, a Russian professor named Oleg Sokolov was found in a river by authorities. They were more than surprised by what they found inside the man's backpack, a woman's arm. Upon further investigation upstream, the police found more body parts of a 24-year-old woman named Anastasia Yashenko, who had been living with the professor before her death. The investigation into the killing was short, as Oleg admitted to shooting his former student four times. After she was dead, he used a kitchen knife and a saw to cut her body into smaller pieces that he could fit into backpacks and then dispose of. Oleg was a famous history teacher and had received awards for his research papers and Napoleonic reenactments. The young woman, Anastasia, would help him with his work, and they soon developed a deeper personal relationship. He claimed that she was wildly jealous of his children he'd had from a past relationship and that she attacked him with a knife. Not many people believe these claims, though, since many women at the university he taught at had complained about his behavior before, but no actions were taken. He said his plan was to dispose of Anastasia's body, then kill himself in a public place while dressed as his idol, Napoleon. The man was delusional, to say the least, and just like Napoleon, came up a little too short of his intended goals. Number 1. Anatoly Moskvin, Living Dolls our last story looks at yet another disturbing historian from Russia. Anatoly Moskvin robbed the graves of over 29 girls. He took the bodies of these poor little girls and turned them into dolls, going so far as dressing them up and putting makeup on their faces. And as if this is any consolation, he took extremely good care of his beloved dolls, even knowing the birthdays of each one and celebrating them once the time came. No one knew what he was up to. He literally lived in the same apartment as his parents, and they had no clue. They just thought he was into collecting creepy life-size dolls. They did complain of a strong smell coming from his bedroom, though, but for some reason, they didn't really think to look into it. In Moskvin's mind, he was doing the right thing. He thought that the parents of the girls had discarded them in death, and he was taking good care of them. He's quoted saying, You abandoned your girls in the cold, and I brought them home and warmed them up. After being evaluated by professionals, Moskvin was found to have a severe form of paranoid schizophrenia. Since the discovery of the life-size dolls, the parents of the girls have called for Moskvin to serve life in prison, some even wanting him to be put to death. But ever since 2012, he's been held in a psychiatric hospital, which is honestly probably the best place for him.